Affinity Photo 2 has a new update. Now we are at Affinity Photo 2.6. What I thought was supposed to happen is that I would get a prompt to do the upgrade install. Instead, I got an email. I'm not great when it comes to updates. I get comfortable with a certain thing and I don't want it to look or be different. I only like change if I'm the one who's doing it. I always do Microsoft updates, but as far as anything else, it's meh. Hey, what can I say? I'm old. Uh, mature. The Affinity Update uses AI technology. This term seems to have an interesting reaction from people. From, it will solve all of our problems and make our life easier, to this is just another example of Big Brother trying to control us. Yeah, I read 1984 when I was in school, and that was before 1984. For me, AI was nothing more than an annoyance because of Microsoft, speaking of Big Brother, and an irritating little thing called Copilot that installed its annoying little self with my Microsoft Office 365 update. The first time I noticed it was when I opened a Word document, and that Copilot icon appeared next to my cursor. It kept trying to give me suggestions, like that person that thinks it's okay to give you advice when you didn't ask. I finally got that little thing to stop chasing me down the page, and it only appeared when I first opened a document. I don't need an assistant. I need donuts. After searching through many videos, including those that gave all sorts of nerdy but useless advice, I found out that all you have to do is go to File, More, Options, click Copilot, and uncheck it. That is time I'll never get back, Microsoft. When you install the Affinity Update, there are some separate files you need to install. If you don't want AI in your life, you don't have to download it. I see you, Microsoft. Since these files have already been AI trained, Affinity doesn't need to use your data. Also, the files are installed on your computer and not elsewhere in the cloud storage of the vendor. I see you, Adobe. And doodly. If you don't get a prompt to install the 2.6 update, you can go to Help up here, and then you can Check for Updates. So when you click on Check for Updates, it's either going to tell you that you have updates or you don't. In this case, it says, I don't have any updates available. I'm currently using the latest available version of 2.6. And that's because I've downloaded already. So I'll just say OK, and then I won't have to worry about it. Every once in a while, I guess you should check for updates. It really doesn't happen very often, but as I said before, I got an email telling me about the latest update. I never got a prompt that there was an update available, so I guess it's, it's always a good idea to check that. Now, once your update is installed, you'll find that you have this little friend in your toolbar. It looks like a little owl, and it's called the Object Selection Tool. There's also a subject selection tool that's in the menu. So if you go to select, there should be a subject selection tool somewhere down here. Select subject. I keep calling it subject selection tool, but it's really called select subject tool. And it's right here. Now, can we use them? Well, not yet. Because when you click on the owl, what you're going to get is this little pop-up. And it says that this is for machine learning models. The object selection tool requires the segmentation model to be installed. And so what you'll do is you'll click on settings. And when you click on settings, you'll find that this pop-up opens. And it has a menu of all the settings that you need to know. So what you're going to need to do is to install the segmentation model and this is for our little owl the object selection tool and the saliency which is going to allow the uh, us to use the select uh, subject tool now when you install these if you figure out that you don't want these on your computer you can always go to settings and you'll go to file up here in settings and then uh, pick machine learning and then just pick uninstall so that's all there is to that if you're worried about it so the first thing I'm going to do 
is to install this one and then once it's done I'll install the other one and then once it's done uh, you can tell that they're done. You probably know this already, but I'll just mention it in passing. You know that it's done because now your uninstall buttons are now uh, enabled in case you want to uninstall this a little bit later. Okay, so now all we have to do is close it. And then we are ready to roll with our two new tools. Now let's take a look at our new toys. Here I have three images one of a woman one of a cute little puppy, and one of an annoyed cat. We're going to start with a picture of the woman. I chose this picture on purpose because it's a little busy. And so far, you pr have probably had the experience of using the, the selection brush tool and how difficult it is to select things when there's a whole lot going on in the background or where there's a big difference between the image that you want and the background where there's not a big difference. So I've decided to pick this one and we'll see how this goes. So over here we have the object selection tool. It looks like a little owl. So we're going to click on it and then it's got to think. That's what the little clock is for. It's got to think about your picture. Now once it's done, you're going to see that there's a little crosshair right there. So you'll just mouse it around until you get the selection that you want. And then once you get that, you'll just click on it. And then once you click on it, you'll get a green mesh right there with little marching ants. So then what we can do, and I, think, I don't think it's going to surprise you that we've got some mess we're going to have to clean up on this. So you go to your Refine tool. And you'll see that there is some stuff that needs to be cleaned up here. So we'll clean this up. So far, this really isn't that much different than the selection tool. The beauty of this, this tool, our little owl tool, is that all it has to do is think, find your image, and then you click on it and you have the selection. You don't have to paint it in or anything like that. But in an image like this, you're still going to have to clean things up. So let's clean things up here as much as we can. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on the cleanup because this particular video is uh, only on the, on the uh, selection tool. And of course here we have hair, which is really hard to do. Okay, so now we have everything pretty much cleaned up. And, of course, you're going to have to do some more work on it. To see a little bit more clearly, we can go down here and under Selection, we can go to New Layer with Mask, and then Apply. And then it's got to think a little bit. And now we can really see the stuff that we have in here. We have all sorts of stuff that we're going to need to clean up. So... Here we can clean stuff up because we're painting on a mask. So we clean stuff up here with the paintbrush tool. Remember to click on the mask and this will go away. So we can clean stuff up like that. Or another thing, remember that we did a long time ago? We went and found the lasso tool which I think is in here. It's called the freehand selection tool, but you use the lasso tool. And what you do is you just lasso around these little areas and get rid of that. Okay, so a little bit of a review here. So that's how you would do that. So that is the object selection tool with our first image. Now let's go over 
to our puppy. And let's try the same thing. This is a picture that I picked out because the color of the background and the puppy are not really that much different. So I was curious about how this object selection tool would do. I have not tried this one yet. Uh, I did try the woman, but I haven't tried this one yet, so this is going to be new to me. So here I clicked on it. I know one thing I don't like about this so far is it takes a lot of time to think. I could have had my whole selection done right now with my selection tool. Oh, there we are. Okay, so we need to to see how much we can get. I found by mousing around a little bit, you can get a pretty good... Oh, that's pretty good, yeah. So you have to ma mouse around to see if you can get the selection that you want, and then click your mouse, and then you get your selection. So now all we have to do is to take the mouse off, and you can see the marching ants, and then click the Refine tool so that we can see what we have left. And as you can see, this right down here needs to be cleaned up a little bit. That's not really that big a deal, I don't think. So we can see if we can do that. Our lasso tool, we might be better off with that. I also like picking animals because they have hair, and this one not so much, but see this hair around here is kind of hard to, to get. Well, that got that pretty well. So we would probably need to get this down here. So let's see if we can get a little bit about this out, and so on. But this really looks pretty good, I think. So the proof in the pudding is to go to New Layer with Mask and Apply and see how that looks. Okay, so now we have our New Layer with Mask. So we could probably get the Lasso tool and lasso some of this stuff off of here. But this really isn't that bad. I mean, delete and enter. And so there's our puppy. Now, the last one we have is the annoyed cat. The annoyed cat, I'm not going to use the object selection tool, but I'm going to use the select and... the select subject right there. So we're going to use the select subject, and it's got to think. This one thinks a little bit faster than the object selection tool does. I have plenty of RAM on my laptop. Well, I don't have tons of RAM, but I have enough RAM. And uh, to me, this shouldn't take too long. Maybe the, um, maybe the app is a little buggy. We'll have to see. Okay, so... We did the select subject. Well, what does it mean by select subject? What this does is it analyzes your picture right here, and then it tries to figure out what the subject is. And obviously it's figured out that its subject is our cat, so it has selected it. So now that it's selected it, all we need to do is to go to the refine the refine button. And remember you have to press this, this uh, tool over here to get your refine button to show up. I don't know if you remember from my earlier videos, if you see my er earlier videos, if that refine button does not show up, it's not that you've done anything wrong. You just have to go over here and just hit the selection brush tool and it will show up. And then all you have to do is to punch refine and it will refine. And there you have almost a perfect selection. But, you know, it's easier to see it when you go down here and you have a new layer with mask and apply. And then you can see what that looks like. That looks perfect. So I'm really liking this one. So give these tools a try. In the comments, tell me what you think about it. Is this better than the selection brush tool where you need to paint your selection? Is it really more accurate? Well, to me, it makes things easier, but I wasn't wowed by it, especially the length of time that it took to think about my image. I was a little put off by that one. You know, and of course, you're going to have to do some cleanup on the images. 
unless it's an easy image like this with a really white background and just one thing in it. That's kind of a no-brainer for a selection tool. So give these new tools a try, and remember to like, subscribe, and ring that notification bell to show a little love, as I am not AI.